What's up guys, we're back for another Mythic Legion's Advent of Decay figure from Four Horsemen Studios, and today we're taking a look at Calavius. This is one of the very, very specifically gladiator-themed figures in the line. So we got him there in that standard Mythic Legion's box. You can see him there in the big window. We've got a bio for this dude on the side, and then the back of the box has a write-up as well as that same artwork that we've seen so far. So let's do it. Let's pull him out. Take a look. All right, guys, here he is out of the package, our Gladiator Calavius figure. And this is one that I wasn't too sure about going in that I really cared about. I liked him, don't get me wrong, but he has turned out to be a bit of a sleeper hit for me, I think. And just as a friendly reminder, I'm not going to do this every video, but you can still pre-order these guys on Big Bad Toy Store. I've mentioned it previously, you're not going to pay retail, you're going to pay a little bit of an inflated price, but it's better to pay that now rather than the crazy, and I repeat, crazy eBay prices you're going to see later. So I'll put a link down below, check it out, uh, you will not regret it. But let's take a look at this guy first. Of course, we're going to start off with articulation and uh, see how he moves around real quick. So he's pretty standard. His head is on a ball, so he's got a lot of bobble. Up and down a little bit, he does have, you know, kind of a, uh, a wide neck ring on the helmet there. And it, it hinders him a little bit because he hits his chest, but it's not too bad. And then, of course, swivel all the way around. Arms go all the way out. That's a very, very tight joint there. Not in a bad way. It's very, it's very filled. There's no gapping in there, and I really like that. Swivel all the way around. We have got elbow rotation, single jointed hinge. We have got uh, forearm rotation at the gauntlet, wrist rotation, and then we've got hinge as well. We have got a waist twist. He is a solid uh, buck as far as his chest goes. So he doesn't have a crunch at the diaphragm or anything like that. We've seen that with some other figures, but he has a waist twist. He goes back and he goes forward quite a bit. And this is something that I, I'm, I'm familiar with with these figures, at least this kind of figure, is that you're going to see some gapping. And there's really no way to avoid it that I know of because there's nothing that covers him here. It's just, you know, bare skin to armor at the waist. So it's kind of what you're going to see. You're going to see a gap. Uh, you're going to see not so much of a gap on the backside. It's mostly if you try to rear him on his on his back. Legs go out all the way, so you can get him to do the gladiatorial splits. Kick forward, kick back. There is a thigh cut in there. We have got a single jointed knee, rotation, and then you've got rotation, rocker, and hinge down there at those ankles. The hinge on the ankles is a, a little hindered, but not too bad. Other than that, though, I think he moves around pretty well. I've gotten him into some uh, fairly dynamic poses for what is ultimately a figure that's somewhat on the larger side, at least compared to what I've looked at recently. Now, as far as the look and feel of this guy, the more that I play with him and get him in my hands, I am loving this design more and more and more. There is a figure that looks like him in the Coliseum line, as far as I can remember. I don't have him, uh, and I kind of regret that now, assuming I'm remembering correctly. But this design is just pretty fantastic. So I did a little research just to make sure I'm not, you know, talking like an idiot again. Because I, I know I've seen a helmet design like this, you know, in, uh, you know, films and just history books in general. And I believe this is a a Mermillo style of gladiator helmet. So, you know, this is very much rooted in history. There's a lot of, of what he has that looks not necessarily mythic legions, but, you know, just like a historical kind of gladiator figure. So maybe if, you know, if you just sort of saw it and don't know where he comes from, you might say, hey, that's a gladiator. Well, that's what he's supposed to be. And I think the point is kind of driven home really, really well here. So he's obviously got some asymmetry going on. We've got a bare chest with a bare arm, and then he's got the uh, gauntlets on both arms, but he has a, a armored arm, and it's really nicely done. Uh, it's all gold with some wear and tear on it with silver and kind of purple that runs down the side. You can see that we have got, you know, gold on the waist, on the kind of rubbery armor down there, and on the loincloth we've got blue and gold. And then we've got, uh, we've seen these boots before, plenty of other figures have them, but I like his color scheme with kind of the brass, copper, and the gold. It looks really, really nice together. It, it very much evokes a gladiatorial kind of look and feel. But that's all good and well. The body is fantastic, you know, musculature is on point. You wouldn't want to mess with this guy. And all the colors are fantastic, and the asymmetry is really cool. That's really doing it for me. But the head on this figure is where everything kind of comes in and makes this figure another level for me. So, of course, let's zoom in on this head for a second. And I got to say, despite the fact that the figure alone is fantastic, and like I said, the more and more I play with it, I really love it, the head on this thing this head in particular is worth the price of admission for me. I really, really like it. The color scheme, the wash, the grittiness, the old 
aged, used look of things here uh, just really does it for me. Everything is cracked and pitted and everything has nicks and cuts all over it and it just looks fantastic. There's a nice nasty old gold color that leads to the silver and of course you see like kind of the black void inside because there's no head in there but it looks like it's cast in shadow which makes it look even more mysterious because this guy looks incredibly menacing especially with this helmet on. I dig the copper color everything up top looks very metallic this looks like polished metal to me I know it's not, but it very much looks like that, and it shines really well in the light. And then, of course, this all leads up to this big frill that sits on top that leads to an even cooler, tiny, tiny, but very well-sculpted skull that sits up there. So again, this is another instance where the Four Horsemen have outdone themselves as far as going the extra mile for sculpt and detail on something like this. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much over the moon as far as this head sculpt goes, and you know, I already said it. That is worth the price of admission for me. Now, as far as accessories for Calavius go, we have a pretty decent spread. You can do a lot of stuff here. We do have, of course, all the requisite uh, adapters, all that kind of stuff. And he has one of the uh, sheaths you can put around his waist or over his shoulder. His is red, though. That's pretty cool. That's the first uh, red one I've come across. We've got a new look for him, though. As you can tell, we've got a new head sculpt here. Uh, this is a swappable head entirely. It's done up in his color scheme, so kind of the brown gold look. We've got these nice big horns. It's the same head that we've seen uh, with figures like Raygor. Other figures have this as well. I'm a huge, huge fan of this particular head. I love it. I don't know if I'm going to use it in lieu of what he comes with on his standard body, but it's really cool. It's worth uh, messing around with, at least for some pictures. Maybe swap it with another figure because it's a sweet head sculpt. And then we've got one pauldron here, and I really like the idea of just one pauldron. It very much plays into the gladiator aesthetic. So we've got the armored arm with a pauldron and a bear arm without. I really, really like that. I like the asymmetry there. I like the wash that's all over it. So it looks, you know, almost pewter in color. And then it's got that gold inlay design on it. So it's very nice. I'm very happy with that. It fits on his right shoulder, so your left on the screen. Uh, as far as weapons goes, he has a decent handful. Keeping with the gladiator theme, we do have a shield. It's got some runes all around it. Uh, it's got a handle so he can hold it either hand. It's not a clip, it's a, it's a handle. Gold inlay and then it's got a wash, uh, kind of a dry brushing on the center there. I like that. We have got his standard style sword. His is a little dirtier than usual. Standard blade, but he's got uh, some patina on his uh, on his hilt there and then a red handle. I like that one quite a bit. But then we have the stuff that really makes him into a gladiator. We have got this guy, and I've seen this before already, and I'm honestly drawing a blank as to what figure came with this. So this isn't unique to him in any way. Uh, we've got the gold rod here with a pointed tip, and then you can swap this end out for the other end, which is the trident over there. They're just, uh, you just, you know, twist them off. And this uh, kind of bladed edge here, halberd type weapon, nice wash on it, looks really, really good. And then the big one, this is my favorite accessory that he comes with, it's the trident. So this is very much a gladiator type weapon. Uh, it's a silver with gold inlay, and then it's got the silver trident at the end. Um, I do have a gripe about this because I do think, you know, something that I've been seeing here and there, especially with staffs and longer, you know, kind of ranged melee weapons, is that they are really, really wide. And even though he has a wider grip than the females, uh, this part right here in particular is a really, really tight fit in his hands to the point where I'm worried I'm going to start scraping paint. Uh, I'm not really sure if that's going to happen. It hasn't yet, but just something to point out. Otherwise, I think this weapon's pretty solid. Uh, this is my go-to for him. I think it's fantastic. Both of these are very, very nice weapons. So, you know, he has a lot of stuff here that is very much gladiator appropriate, and I dig everything about his accessory set. So overall, this is another winner for me. I went into this figure not really knowing if I absolutely cared about the gladiator aesthetic or not. But what do you know? I absolutely dig it. It's a fantastic action figure. I love everything about this figure, and it's not an understatement. Um, it's a pretty fantastic piece. I love the design. I like the larger body style, and this is the first larger uh, male figure that I've looked at recently. I like the asymmetry of his armor. I love all of the accessories, but I most importantly love that standard helmeted head. I think it's fantastic. There's a ton of detail on that thing, and just it all plays into the myth that they have built for this particular character, and that really kind of amps it up a bit for me. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's Advent of Decay Calavius figure from Four Horsemen. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.